I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. What's going on everybody, all my brothers and sisters, I pray all is well with everybody. Now we want to talk about Constantine for a moment. And I know a lot of y'all been waiting on me to do this video about Constantine. And let me say this off top before I get started. Um, let's just be real. It's a lot of people don't believe in the Bible. It's a lot of people that do believe in the Bible. And we got a lot of teachings out. We got a lot of religions. A lot of people say the Bible, you know, it's fake. And then a lot of people say it's real. And what I want to do in this video, since this video is talking to a lot of y'all on here, um, to the ones that's been asking me the questions about why I believe, you know, what I believe. And let me say this off top, because it's by faith. I'm going to take the word by faith. I can only answer for myself and what I do. I know it's a lot been said about the Bible, and um, I've been studying the Bible a long time. And I understand t by talking to different people why they feel, you know, what they feel. You got so many things out, like people talk about how scriptures are being left out. And then how can a man like Constantine have something to do with the Bible? Then you got a great debate about that. Some say Constantine changed up the Bible, a lot of things in the Bible. Some say he didn't. So what we want to do in this video is go back to Constantine. And we have to understand back in, in, in those days, especially with the Romans and what they done, let me tell y'all something. Christians were being tortured very bad, killed, persecuted, murdered. Man, they was killing Christians left and right. I'm, I'm telling you, if you ever go back and do the studying. So, when you look at this Roman emperor by the name of Constantine, Constantine was very famous for becoming the single ruler of the Roman Empire by defeating his, you know, his brother-in-law. We know the story, we know the battle. And that's why some people say he converted over to Christianity later on. And then you got an argument saying that he didn't. You know, it's each to their own, you know, what you believe. And when you think about, I got to take it there, holidays, which didn't have nothing to do with the Lord. God has holy days. And when you look at Christianity, how Christianity is tied in with so much paganism, and you wonder why so many people believe in Christianity and then some don't and then you got a lot of people wondering why do the Christians do the same thing that the pagans is doing especially a man like Constantine who loved the sun gods you know so now you got a ball of confusion about who wrote the Bible you gonna hear about Shakespeare and King James. You gonna hear a whole lot of different things. Manuscripts got laws. This ain't right. This ain't right. But it's up to you to take it by faith if you're gonna truly believe in the Bible. Elohim, which is God. You know, Yahshua. And I see this all day, man. People fussing about this. You know. So, let's look at Constantine for a moment. That's why I say I'm, I love talking to different people about stuff like this because it's a lot of unbelievers on her at the borderline of converting into following the faith. But there's so many things that don't, they don't understand and then they like scientists I always tell them, you know, ain't no God. God didn't create nothing. Man made everything. You got so much teaching out here. But Constantine had a lot to do with paganism that's why when Craig, uh, not uh, paganism excuse me when that crept up into the church it never left look at Easter look at Christmas look at Halloween once again God have holy days not holidays so if you allow one to get in hey man celebrate Easter why not Christmas why not Halloween? Why not Black Friday? So next thing you know, you got a long list of holidays. That's just a few of them. And then you see where it's okay. And you know who who, who had a part, a big part of all of this? Satan. 
Let's just accept this. Let's allow that. I'm just telling the truth here, y'all. You can do whatever you want to do. It's up to you. I'm not condemning nobody. Do what you want to do. I'm just telling you what's real and where this stuff come from. And Constantine had a big impact on development uh, the development of Christianity. Uh, Constantine was a lifelong pagan. And let me tell you something off top about Constantine. I know a lot of y'all already know this. He didn't get baptized until he was on his deathbed. He did. Matter of fact, Constantine murdered his own wife and his son. Constantine made Christianity the official Roman religion for a political gain. That's why I say you do the study and you will see how he pretty much worshipped Apollo, which was the sun god. And he continued to do that. He did that all the way up till he died, y'all. He had a Catholic priest sprinkle some water on him and hoped that that got him into heaven. This is why I try to teach when I talk about baptism on her. A lot of people want to connect it with water baptism. But the water don't save you. The water does not save you. And Constantine thought by, them, by that priest throwing that water on him that he got right with the Lord. That's why I say, so you got people who say, yep, he changed up the Bible. Then you got people say he didn't change up the Bible. But I know one thing from studying, this man had a big impact on the Bible, whether you, whether you want to believe it or not. The problem is, everybody think they right. This Bible right. Buy this book. This book right. Everybody think they right. And then you got you got unbelievers trying to really figure out who is right. And it's con just nothing but confusion. It's division. And we see this all day, every day. Just like I was seeing two brothers the other day on her debating about uh, Moses coming off the mountain with the Ten Commandments. Then they, one brother was saying he didn't have the Ten Commandments. He had the Torah. No, he didn't. He had the Ten Commandments. How do, let me say this. How do we know any of this stuff we don't? We got to take it by faith once again. Why? Because none of us was there. None of us was there. That's why it don't make sense to sit up and fuss and fight over what color Jesus is. Who the real Jews is. What Moses was carrying when he came off the mountain. Well, none of us there. None of us. So, when you look at this, Satan loves that kind of stuff because he's the author of confusion. God is the author of peace. So, Satan loves for us to just kick it back and forth. And brother T, uh, you was asking me about the birth of Jesus when I did that video about December the 25th. Now, Constantine played a big part in deciding when Jesus' birth was going to be. It was going to be celebrated through the centuries. So to this day, we can honestly say, don't nobody know for sure when Jesus was born. Ain't no historical record. You got people guessing at this, guessing at that. Some say what you know what they think, but we see around about the fourth century, people start saying that December twenty fifth is Jesus' birthday. And when you think about Constantine, let me ask y'all something: How can a Roman, a Roman emperor, have anything to do with an event that occurred about we can say three hundred years before he sat on the throne? What are you saying, JT? Constantine wasn't around to after Jesus. Y'all see what I'm saying? Constantine had no part in the birth of Jesus, but he played an important role in deciding when his birth would be celebrated. Kind of why I say Constantine was born almost three centuries after Jesus, not before Jesus. Oh, you want to say Yahshua? So when you look at how Christianity accepts everything, that's why they do everything almost the same as the paganism. I'm not talking about everybody because I know a lot of Christians who don't celebrate holidays and then I know a lot of people who do celebrate holidays. But like I say, it's each to your own. What you want to do is what you want to do. So once again, Constantine... He didn't have no part of the birth of Jesus. Now, y'all think I'm contradicting myself. Notice what I'm saying. He had no part in the birth. But he played an important role in deciding when his birth would be celebrated. 
That's why I say so. You you let in one holiday, then you let in the rest of them. If you ever look at the word holiday, then look at holy day. Look at what was changed out to make it holiday. Who's good at twisting up everything? Twisting up the truth and mix, mixing in a little truth with a bunch of lies? Satan. The father of lies. So this man, Constantine, once again, blended in Christian and pagan traditions. So to me, he never really left his pagan roots. So that's why I said earlier, you look at Constantine, he was baptized on his deathbed. And here goes something else a lot of people, um, you know, thought about about Constantine because in that battle, or we could say right before the battle, he claimed that he saw a sign of the cross in the heavens. He claimed that he really saw something. Now, people say they don't know if it was true or not. Because if you look at the army that Constantine had versus the army, you know, that he was going up against, you see something, don't you? And I'm saying that to make a point. He he saw a sign of a cross in the heavens. Now, pause right there. Think about the same thing about a rapture. The little Scottish girl, Margaret MacDonald, if I'm not mistaken, that's her name. And Darby, we know how the dream came up. And then everybody wanted to, not everybody, but they wanted to add a rapture in with the Bible. All because of a dream this little Scottish girl had. So they mixed that in with the Bible. Now what you got? A whole lot of confusion. Post-trib, pre-trib, mid-trib. No rapture, secret rapture. You got confusion all over, 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 over something that Jesus never even said. You got confusion teaching because oh now Jesus is coming before a tribulation to carry away the saints to a secret location. Not even biblical. So we see people dreams are being added to the Word of God, and that's why I teach against this stuff. I'm not gonna do like everybody. Oh, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a pre trib buddy coming before tribulation. That's y'all believe the ones that believe that. So when you look at Constantine, and then you'll see about six major changes to Christianity: the place of the resurrection of Christ, the time of the resurrection of Christ, time of birth of Christ, the script. The scriptural method of becoming a Christian, the relationship of Christianity to the state, and then the headquarters from Jerusalem to Rome. And then you wonder why, if you look at your man-made calendar, which that ain't nothing but Satan's calendar, the Lord don't operate on this calendar that we claim that we think this calendar is right. Look at Easter and backtrack through the years, and you wonder why it's always changed up. How do you move the resurrection date? When did when did God say it was okay to move his holy days? Confusion. The Lord didn't have nothing to do with that. That's why when I talk about the cross, I talk about the cross. Those early Christians back then, they remembered the Lord's resurrection. Every, every Sabbath or Lord's Day, what you want to call it, how you want to look at it. That was that big yearly week long celebration of the resurrection hell 14 days after the first moon following the what? Spring equinox which is something that most Baptist churches I know for sure don't hardly talk about because most, most Baptist churches don't talk about Passover. They don't talk about stuff like the spring equinox. You know what they talk about? Easter. You know what they do? They go outside and hide Easter eggs while the preacher is preaching. Paganism stuff. Christ don't have nothing to do with no Easter bunny, celebrating no Easter bunny and hiring eggs and all that crazy stuff that the pagans do. I told y'all in the video the other day, rabbit don't even lay eggs. See how confusing this stuff is? Female hen lay eggs, chicken. And now you got little kids wondering why, uh, well, will a bunny, mama, a bunny, a bunny do lay eggs. We just got, we're just going to stay confused. Because the lie have been put in place so long, it's terrible. So yeah, you had the big yearly week long celebration of the resurrection. Hell, 14 days after that first moon following the spring equinox. 
it always coincided with the what? Yearly Jewish Passover. Now you wonder why people fight about the Sabbath so much. Some say, well, Constantine changed, excuse me, Constantine changed it up. Some say, no, he didn't. That's why I just serve the Lord regardless. I do. Let me ask y'all a question. Did Constantine really change the Sabbath? Or was Constantine making the Sunday the official day of rest for the Roman Empire? Just a question. I love to see y'all feedback. And this is another thing to look at about Constantine. We see good in people. We see bad in people. But have you ever noticed this? That the crucifixion was abolished in so many ways. Because you know how they crucified back then. The killing of unwanted infants was abolished. The practice of slavery was discouraging many slaves. They were pretty much set free. The reason why I say this is because I know people who believe in Constantine but don't believe in the Most High. Because they look at it and say, well, Constantine did that. Well, let me ask y'all this. When Jesus got on the cross and said, it is finished, what is that? Who your trust in, man or the Most High? Constantine did many things to help the Christian church. Yes, he did. And let me, let me tell you something else. We're going to close after this. This is something else a lot of preachers probably don't even know. Constantine made sure that the leaders was taken care of. So we can say the pastors, the elders, the bishops, the overseers, they was taken care of because Constantine made sure that he provided many benefits for them. They didn't have to pay taxes. They didn't even have to serve in the military. They was paid good salaries. Ooh. But if you do the studying and go back to people like Apostle Paul, Peter, John the Baptist, and you go back to them in their time, it wasn't no joke. The elders and pastors then, with the murdered Christians, they had a life of hardship. I mean, look at what they done to Jesus. Jesus didn't have it made easy. It was a life of hardship. But Constantine, y'all wonder why y'all see these false teachers and, and false prophets who love material things, got the love of money, the prosperity gospel. Well, Constantine made it a life of luxury for them preachers then. Uh-oh. I done messed up some of these false prophets. That's what he did. He made it luxury. Paid them off well. Paid them good. And then you look at the ones back then, like I was saying, that was killed in the face. Look at what they done to John the Baptist, the forerunner for Jesus. They beheaded him. They beheaded him. Those folks then got murdered for the gospel. These folks now, they wouldn't last 10 minutes back then. It wouldn't have been no such thing as a prosperity message. And you ain't talking about prosperity dealing with your soul. So yeah, Constantine, he thought that Christianity was the one thing that could that could unite his empire and make it great. So he tried to split it up and make it all work. And that's why you got so much confusion. And then we need to come back, we'll do a part two about this because there's a whole lot I can say about Constantine. But I'll be about an hour long, so I'm gonna go ahead and end at about I was going to say 20 minutes, so we're doing good. So y'all, y'all have a blessed one. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Till the next time, if it's in the Lord's will, see you when I see you. Peace.